What's good? What's good? We're back. It's Paul Pickett. Owner of Promo Palace.biz, Promo Palace LLC. Want to thank y'all for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button in that right hand corner. Um, also, uh, check us out on Facebook, Promo Palace LLC, Instagram TV, Twitter. The audio version goes to Spotify, um, Deezer, Amazon Music, uh, Slacker, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and several other platforms. Before I get started, hit that subscribe button. This right here is going to be Vlog 20, The Importance of a Clean Music Video. Let me get my, some of my soda in my system. I don't drink coffee, so Coca-Cola is my caffeine. But um, yeah, The Importance of a Clean Music Video. You have to look at this like FM radio. You know, because the, the main importance of a clean music video is limitations. You're going to put limitations on the reach of your music video. If you just got this super explicit music video, it's really like blogs and world star. I mean, even a lot of influencers won't accept explicit stuff. And if you try to take a video that's explicit, anything that advertises any form of tobacco products in there, if there's alcohol being drunk, drugs, half-naked women, um, and if you use the N-word in any anything advertising-wise, it's automatically being declined. It's not allowed whatsoever. Because, um, you know, I mean, you can look at advertising platforms as corporate white America, corporate white media, and that's the thing. Like, white America is not allowed to say the N-word. They're not going to let you advertise it either. <laughs> that's just how it works. They're not allowed to say it, so guess what? You're not allowed to advertise it on a, these platforms. And the reason I say white America is because a lot of these tech guys, are, they're white guys that own these. You know, Twitter, white guy. Facebook, white guy. You know, MySpace, the original starter of all this stuff, white guy, you know. So, like, white America is not allowed to say the N-word, and they sure don't allow you to advertise it on these platforms either, you know. And anything is just too explicit. I and mean, if you're just smoking a cigar, take it, you know, you you pouring liquor. If you drive, if, if there's a shot just going by, like, a liquor store, and it just says liquor, it's it's not going to, it's going to be a client. Like, you've never seen a social media ad advertising alcohol and tobacco ever in our lifetime. So why would you think that you could put it in a music video and that it's going to get approved? You know, when tobacco companies are not allowed to advertise on social media, alcohol companies are not allowed to advertise on social media. And those are the top advertising platforms for music videos. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Pinterest, whatever, Vimeo, um, whatever advertising platform you go to, anything too explicit is going to get declined. You got to look at it like FM radio, you know, or MP3s. When you service MP3s to record pools and DJs, you want to, if you have, if your record is just a dirty version, you want to have a clean version as well. Some artists just make their music clean so they don't have to worry about clean and dirty, and that's even better. But every dirty version should have a clean version. Because this idea that an unsigned and up-and-coming artist with no fan base is going to break a dirty record, it's never been done. It's never been done. Not without fan base already in place. You ain't breaking no dirty records without already having thousands and thousands and thousands of fans already in place. FM Radio isn't breaking no dirty records. They're all clean versions. You know, even uh, even BET took away BET Uncut. They're not even playing uncut videos in a lot of spots no more. You know, especially because America's getting so sensitive about everything. Not saying I'm getting sensitive about everything. I'm not saying I have a problem with, you know, you advertising songs that have the N-word. Because, I mean, a lot of rap songs use the N-word. And that's why this... This clean version thing, I, I should have referenced this before I started. This really re main, mainly pertains to rappers and hip-hop. You don't really see this problem with pop music or country and rock and stuff. 
they don't really have their videos too dirty and too explicit because you know the average rap video is just like all right let's make a song let's you know rent a bunch of cars that we can't afford um let's pay a bunch of chicks that we don't even date you know to be in our videos and we probably couldn't even date um let's smoke drugs smoke weed or smoke weed or put drugs in the video like you know portraying like they got coke in the video or something like that whether it's real or fake or whatnot still it's you can't advertise it you know it even though you know i disagree with weed being criminal you know being criminalized and being illegal on a national scale guess what it's not legal on a national scale yet i live in a state where it's still legal so guess what you can't advertise nationally when you know you're smoking weed in a music video and there's still tons of states that have not legalized it yet and my state's probably going to be the last to legalize it because north carolina's on the bible belt you know so yeah there's that you know the, the taking account then there's the, the taking account that kids can be watching you know and if you're trying to build a fan base of younger a younger fan base you know this idea that you're gonna break yourself with just a dirty version <laughs> it's bogus it's unheard of you know for every dirty there has to be a clean version because if we take the video to YouTube and try to get it approved, it won't if it's got too too explicit lyrically with the, you know, you're too much cussing or using, anytime using the N-word, it's automatically out. Any, you know, sometimes we get away with, with, you know, somewhat naked women, like, you know, showing the booty, but they usually can't be wearing like thongs. They, they, they usually could be wearing like, swim just bathing suits that aren't thongs or something like that you know and, and but like if they're wearing thongs and it's just you see nothing but booty they're not gonna approve it you know if you're, you're smoking cigarettes or cigars or you got alcohol you know that you're advertising in it they're, they're more likely not going to approve it you know and so yeah it just makes sense to have a clean version of your video why does every rapper's video got to be the same thing cars half naked women uh smoking weed portraying that we sell drugs the same old thing no originality no thought process into your music video whatsoever you know so yeah you gotta have these clean versions because then we take it to twitter not approved facebook not approved i've tried to advertise videos on facebook where people are smoking cigars that have no labels or nothing, just a cigar. They're just smoking a cigar. And guess what? Not approved because it's a tobacco product. You know? So, yeah. This idea that you're going to break yourself with dirty records without fan base already in place. Who's going to advertise it? I mean, yeah, you could take it to Worldstar. But guess what? Worldstar ain't breaking artists. Name an artist that Worldstar has broke in the last five to ten years. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I have, you know, TikTok breaking artists, YouTube artists are breaking themselves, Facebook artists are building a fan base, Instagram artists are building a fan base. But you can't build a fan base on Worldstar because you can't really engage with people like you need to. You know what I'm saying? You, you, everything goes to Worldstar's accounts. You can't bring, can't get followers, you know, on World, on Worldstar per se. They would have to leave and go somewhere else. And they're not doing that. People, when they go on World Star, they're staying on World Star. They're not leaving to go to Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and whatnot. And even if World Star adds you to their YouTube channel, one channel isn't going to break you just uploading your video once. Doing something once. Even if you're on all the top blogs, just posting your video once to the top blogs isn't going to break you. You have to be constantly dropping content it has to be content after content after content after content after content you know and if you're not advertising on the blogs just posting to the blogs that are oversaturated you know and if you're paying to get on the blogs now you're competing with the people that didn't have to pay to get on the blogs who are going to get all the traffic you know so 
yeah, this idea that you're going to take a clean music video or even a clean MP3 and break yourself. No, man. You got, you got, I mean, you got to have clean versions. Without a clean version, you're not, I mean, dirty versions are not doing it unless you already got fan base. Only mainstream artists or major independent artists are breaking dirty records because they already have fan base in place. But they broke themselves with the cleaner joints by getting the radio play, by getting, you know, I mean, that's the thing. Even influencers, I do TikTok marketing, and a lot of TikTok influencers are not accepting explicit songs. Too much cussing, too much, you know, illegal activity promotion in your music. They're not accepting it because they have clean brands. They're advertising, you know, corporate brands. People advertising corporate brands like grocery stores or whatever, they're not going to take on your explicit stuff and advertise it. And even some of these dancers, they might be religious. They're not going to advertise your explicit stuff. I know marketer companies that will not promote no dirty music whatsoever. Why? Because it go against their morals. Everybody's not in it just for the money. Some people want to be successful, you know, and the way to be successful in the music business is you better have a clean version for every dirty version. Clean version for every dirty version. I mean, the standards of MP3s is if you got a dirty version, you should have a clean, and then your acapella, you should have a dirty acapella and a clean acapella, and then the instrumental. Music video is no different. If you got a dirty version, you should have a clean version. If you got... Excuse me. Got a burp. If you got a dirty version of your lyric video or an animated video, you should make a clean version as well. Because you cannot advertise the dirty version in a lot of places. The more explicit you are, the less your chances of getting approved. And the more explicit the visual content is, you, you know, you could actually get off. You could get by with cussing in the lyrical content sometimes, but once the visual content is just out there with too much illegal promotion activities or too much sexual activities or too much alcohol, tobacco activities, which is not allowed advertise, like they don't even allow them to advertise on social media, period, whatsoever. So they're not going to allow it in the music video. You know, it just makes sense for you to have a clean version if you're really not trying to limit yourself. If you if you choose to want to just limit yourself, hey, good luck with that. But you're limiting your reach if you don't have a clean version of every dirty version. It doesn't matter what we're talking about here in the music business. Every dirty version should have a clean version because it's going to be limited. You're not average. You're not getting picked up for the music video on prime time music video. You know show with a dirty version all dirty versions are played late night if they even have still late night dirty version you know shows BET doesn't have the BET cut no more so like some of these places are just cutting it out all together because some because America's getting so sensitive and the world's getting so sensitive if you say anything nowadays you know they want to they want to hit you with the cancel culture and cancel you if they don't like what you have to say. You know what I'm saying? Which I don't agree with that either. Because only your fans can cancel you if you have fans. This idea that your non-fans can cancel you if you got millions of fans. You got a million fans. If zero one of your fans is screaming cancel you, ain't nothing the non-fans can do. Because they're not... They're not supporting the cause anyway, so they can't stop the cause. You know? So this idea that somebody's going to cancel you and they're not a fan of yours, only your fans can cancel you. Your actual real fans that actually spend money on your merchandise and, and, you know, constantly stream your music religiously over and over again. You know? But yeah, the importance of a clean music video is just... One reason and one reason only. You're limiting the reach. and I mean, I shouldn't have to tell you, I shouldn't have to really get to this rant about why clean music video is important, except you're limiting your reach. And if you think limiting your reach 
is a smart thing to do or a good thing to do in advertising and building fan base in the music business world. It's not. It's you should not put no limits on anything. You know, Master P said it, man. Master P said it best. You know, just made me think about that when I said that. You should not put no limits on anything you're doing in the business world when you're trying to reach fans. You should never put limitations on it. You know what I'm saying? That's why my new little apparel, I decided, hey, you know, now we got to bring cats lovers in the mix too. Not just dog lovers, cat lovers, because I'm limiting myself by just thinking, you know, litters, only dogs have litters. No, cats have litters too, and so do lions and and tigers and whatnot. So yeah, so anything dealing with litters, I gotta I gotta add it to new litter apparel so I don't limit my reach, you know, of, of who will buy my product and you know, who's interested in my product. And when you just have a dirty version, that's just I mean, that only caters to one type of fan. It doesn't cater to fans that don't want to hear dirty music, that that only want to hear the clean version. It doesn't cater to people, you know, that just have morals in their life, you know, with everything. You know what I'm saying? And unless you just make it gangster rap, I mean... And solely gangster rap, or just trap rap, you're just talking about, I mean, come on, man, you shouldn't be putting no limits. You know, even trap rappers and gangster rappers shouldn't put limits. They shouldn't just do gangster music or just trap music. They should do other things as well to reach other fan bases, you know? It's like when um my man, uh, what's his name? Um... I can't even think of his name right now. But it's a rapper that came into the game and instantly went pop. Instantly went pop with it, you know, and realized that hip hop has limitations because it's so explicit. Yeah, it's very popular, but it still has limitations because of the more explicit you are, the more limitations you put on it. And if you look at all the top artists, the greatest artists in the game right now, when you look at the power of their fan base, they're the least explicit. The J. Coles, the Kendrick Lamars, the Drakes, you know, the Big Shines, the Kanye West, they're, they're not over explicit. And there might be some explicit every now and then, but they're not over explicit. Are too explicit, and, and that's the thing. The artist that's the least explicit is always going to be at the top of this game because they they can reach more people because they're going to reach people who like non-explicit music and explicit music because people who like explicit music will still listen to the non-explicit stuff, but people who like non-explicit music don't listen to explicit. Re let me repeat that. Hold up. Let me take a sip. You hit the subscribe button in that right-hand corner, and let me repeat that. People who listen to explicit music will listen to the non-explicit stuff. People who listen to only non-explicit music will not listen to explicit music. That's the difference. So you got to take that in account. That if you're a non-explicit artist, explicit fans will listen to your music still. But the fans that are of only non-explicit music ain't checking your stuff out. I was about to cuss and get explicit. Ain't checking your stuff out for nothing. Because that's how it works. You know. So that's the importance of a clean music video. Don't put limitations on it. You know, because the people who only listen to non-explicit aren't listening to explicit, but explicit people listen to everything. Non-explicit, explicit, over-explicit, mild explicit, hot, hot, mild, medium, explicit, whatever you want to call it. They're listening to it all. But not people who only listen to non-explicit mu music don't listen to explicit stuff. 
Only explicit people who listen to explicit music a lot will listen to everything, including explicit, non-explicit, whatever. Doesn't really matter. So you know. Once again, hit the subscribe button. This is Vlog Twenty: The Importance of a Clean Music Video. Um, the audio version goes on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, um, t- uh, TuneIn Radio, Slacker. You can Google Paul Pickett Podcast. That's what the audio version. Um, also follow us on Twitter, Promo Palace LLC. Facebook, Promo Palace LLC. Instagram, Promo Palace. Check out Promo Palace del- PromoPalace.biz if you need some music marketing and promotions or just marketing for your brand. And we pretty much deal with all platforms. Um, and we can work with almost any budget long as it's a real budget you know you come in with anything less than a hundred dollars that's not a budget like a hundred dollars anything less than a hundred dollars a month is not a budget i don't care what you say it's not a budget it's it's not not in this business you know when every artist that's making it has budgets and has teams behind them ain't no artists make it in this music business with spending zero dollars on advertising and promotions. Somebody's spending that money on advertising and promotions. Maybe the artists themselves didn't spend it and had an investor, but somebody spent it. So this idea that, that you're going to make music and nobody's going to spend no dollars and you're going to make it, it's unheard of, it's impossible, it's bogus, it's, it's a lie, it's fraudulent, it's fake, it's make-believe, it's phony, you know? So, yeah, also check out New Little Apparel, newlitter.com. Check out indiecastle.net, planetplaylist.com, uh, TikTok, Promo Palace LLC. Once again, hit that subscribe button in that right hand corner. Um, this is Paul Pickett, Promo Palace LLC. I want to thank you for tuning in. Vlog 20, the importance of a clean music video, and I'm out.